Unlike GarageBand here on the Mac that has a luxurious 256 tracks, GarageBand on iOS has only 32. So what do you do when you run out of tracks? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Let's go. Now, right up front, I wanna let you know there is no way to add more tracks. Once you hit 32, that's the maximum, but there is a very cool function called the merge function that can help you combine multiple tracks together, therefore freeing up additional tracks to add in more instruments. Let's show you how to use it right now. Step one, you want to copy your project and make sure you've got a fresh version. So we're gonna tap in the top left here to jump out of this one. This is version six. Now, what I recommend you do is tap and hold and then hit this duplicate button. We've now got a version seven. So if we mess up, we know we can go back to version six. We'll open up version seven and we're ready to start merging together some of these tracks and freeing up some space. Now you can actually use this process with any types of tracks at all, but the three that I like to use it with are backing vocals, percussion, and guitars. Because once you've got those set and ready to go, you often don't have to tweak a whole lot about them. Now keep that in mind that as soon as we use this process, you'll lose the ability to change things. So if you're using drummer tracks like these, if you're using MIDI tracks, if you've got things in your audio tracks, that will actually remove your ability to change things. You won't be able to adjust your plugins and your EQ and your settings, it'll bake all of that in there. So make sure everything's mixed pretty much the way you want it first, and then go ahead and use this process. Let's start with these percussion tracks, because as you can see, we've got two drummer tracks here, and then we've got two drum tracks here, another drum track here, we've got some percussion here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six tracks, and we have already mixed these. You can see here, we've done a good job of mixing, we've added all of our effects, so we really don't need to do anything on these individual tracks. What we can do is merge these down into a stereo track. Now to do that, we need to tap on one of the icons here. Now don't tap out here, this won't work. This will give you a different menu. Tap right here on the icon and hit the merge button. And then you can see over here on the left, we can select multiple tracks. So we're gonna select all of these percussion tracks all the way down, all six of them, and then hit this merge button here in the top right corner. What that's going to do is it's going to make a backup copy of our project. It's going to merge down all of those files into one stereo file. Now again, keep in mind, it bakes in all of the effects. Anything that you add on there is going to be included in this stereo file. And there it is. And you can see there, all of those tracks are gone, their history. And instead, we've got this one track. And if we solo this and take a listen to it, let's, uh, let's see what we've got in this track. There you go, there's all of those different percussion instruments, all the different drums, they're all merged down into one track. So we've taken six tracks and bounced them down to one. It's like the old four track tape recorders for those that are old school that were around in those days. It just means that you can free up some more space to do more things. Let's do this a couple more times with some different tracks now. Okay, let's now do this with our guitars because again, we've got one, two, three guitars here and we're pretty happy with how they're sitting. So once again, we'll tap on one of these right on the icon there hit the merge button, select these three tracks, one, two, three, hit the merge button in the top right corner, and it's gonna go away and merge those tracks down. It's gonna combine those three tracks into one stereo track, which is down here now. And again, if we solo this one, let's take a listen to these guitars. <laughs> And again, if you're listening on stereo, you'll hear that we've got the full stereo range there of those guitars. They're sounding good. And if we bring those back in here with our drums. And we can bring these back into our mix. Now, one thing to keep in mind is you may need to adjust these because they'll, they'll normalize these tracks. So you may find that they slightly increase the volume. So you may not want these in at the volume they come in at. So let's bring them down a little bit and bring them back in here with the rest of our track. Think of all the people who need help. You call it truth, I call it opinion. There you go. So we'll just need to sort of mix those down to make sure that everything is balanced there with our merge tracks. Before we jump into our final example here, let's jump out here and just have a look at these copies. So you can see here, here is an Illusion version seven. There's our first copy before we did our first merge and here's our second one. So even if you don't do that process I showed you at the start to back up and duplicate, GarageBand got you covered. It doesn't want you to get into trouble. And the reason that you wanna keep those copies is that if you wanna come back and tweak any of these 
sounds, once they're merged, you will need to have access to those. So using the version control technique that I recommend here and keeping those copies or previous versions is definitely going to help you out. Our third and final example is going to be backing vocals. Now, backing vocals is a great one to use for this because you tend to use up lots of tracks and they're usually just sort of blending in there together. So what we're going to do is we've got our lead vocal here. We're going to grab all of these backing tracks and put these vocals into one merge file. So again, all we do is tap on our icon there, hit the merge button, select which ones want to go in, and you can merge an individual track with itself. That's actually really handy. There's videos down in the description telling you why you may want to do that. It helps if you're using particular plugins that maybe someone else doesn't have, or you want to normalize audio, or you want to use additional drama tracks when you can only have two. Heaps of reasons to use merge. Anyway, let's hit the merge button here on these backing vocals, and this will, again, make a copy of the track, merge all of these together, and we should have one backing vocal track. Now, there it is, and you can see it's got silence there, so you could even come in here and like start editing this, because you don't need any of that when it's silent, and then when it comes in here to our backing vocals, take a listen. Don't worry at all, it's just an illusion. Bring it back in with our other tracks. Don't trouble yourself, just an illusion. Very cool, yeah. And then right here at the end, where we got all this business going on, it's only using that one stereo track. Just, just, just an illusion. And it maintains quite a bit of the quality. You might think, Pete, what does it do to the quality? It's pretty good. I mean, don't do it if you don't have to do it. But look at this. We've freed up so many tracks now. We're actually only using like seven tracks now in this entire project. So we can add an additional 25 tracks here if we want to add a bunch more guitars and basses and keys and all sorts of sounds. So if you're finding that you're running out of tracks here in GarageBand iOS, use the merge function, free up some tracks. Hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time. Now, backing vocals are a great candidate. Date. <laughs> Try that one again. <laughs>